What's up guys, Dr. Houlihan here. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the benefits of wearing toe spacers. Now, the main goal with wearing toe spacers is to restore the natural anatomical alignment of the foot. This is going to entail all sorts of positive benefits that I've decided to categorize in three different ways. The first category is to avoid deformity. The second category is to restore the strength of the foot. And the third category is to restore the circulation to the foot. Let me also preface this video by saying bunions are not caused by genetics. Bunions are not caused by genetics. Bunions are not caused by genetics. For those of you listening in the back, bunions are not caused by genetics. If bunions were caused by genetics, it might be something you expect to see at birth. Research has shown this is not the case. Babies are not born with bunions. If bunions were caused by genetics, you might expect to see identical twins perhaps have a genetic component to this. Research has shown that this is also not the case. Even in identical twins that both develop bunions, footwear is the causative factor and genetics is not a factor. You might also expect to see this in populations worldwide if it's a common genetic factor, but that's also not the case. In underdeveloped nations or indigenous populations who don't wear shoes, they don't have bunions. And in fact, they have far superior foot health compared to those of us living in the USA. So let's talk about the first category of avoiding deformities of foot using toe spacers. If we look at what's happened to our feet today, if we take a foot that is classically shaped more rectangularly or splayed out towards the end, and we put it into something that is more triangular or tapered towards the end, you'll see that you get a foot that is shaped like a shoe instead of a foot that is shaped like a foot. This happens with 99% of footwear that's on the market today. They're tapered in the front and they take the big toe and the little toe and they squeeze them together. So using toe spacers, you put the spacers in between your toes and you reverse those forces. You take the big toe and the little toe and you squeeze them back apart and they come into their more anatomical alignment. Using your toe spacers to keep your toes spread apart, especially the big toe and the little toe, is going to be great at avoiding bunions and bunionettes. That's the number one and probably the most obvious problem that can be addressed by using the toe spacers. So this next category is going to be about restoring the strength of the foot. I'm going to put an image up on the screen here for you guys. This first image that you're looking at is the muscles that attach to the big toe as viewed from the side. Now, if you think that these might look like the arch of the foot, you're correct. The muscles that attach to the big toe comprise a large part of the muscles that support that arch in your foot. Now, if you take the muscles of the big toe and we view them from underneath the foot, you can see that they are all in perfect alignment. They are running in a straight line, and this is mechanically advantageous in terms of using these muscles as a lever to flex your big toe. Now, if you take the big toe and you bend it inwards, you're taking all of these muscles out of alignment. They're no longer able to function properly. A lot of times you'll see these muscles start to atrophy and they simply just will not support the arch of your foot anymore. Now, I'll show you another image of all of the intrinsic muscles of the foot as viewed from underneath. The same thing is true of the muscles that attach to the pinky toe that is true of the muscles that attach to the big toe. If you take those toes and you bend them inward towards the midline of the foot, you are reducing the mechanical advantage and the lever action of those muscles to flex those toes and abduct those toes, and they really just won't be functioning properly. They start to atrophy, and they do horrible things to the rest of your foot as well. The same thing is true of all of the other intrinsic muscles that attach to the middle three toes. If your feet are all crunched together, your toes are crunched together, not only can they A, not move, but B, not move efficiently in the manner that they were meant to. So when all of your toes are crunched together, and especially if the big toe is at a valgus angle, that can affect your gait cycle dramatically. The last phase of gait cycle is called toe off, meaning that you're supposed to be pushing off of your big toe. And if your joint is out of alignment, if your big toe is pointing inwards, you're not able to push off of your big toe at all. People who have this happen start to roll over that first metatarsal phalangeal joint right where that bunion will start to form. Um, or they'll kind of lead with the instep of their foot and they really won't have much extension of their leg during gait. They won't have much push off with their gait. There's all sorts of awful things that can happen to your gait cycle if you're not able to use your big toe. So, that being said, if we take a foot that has been crunched into a shoe into a triangular shape and we put the toe spacers in between the toes and we bend those toes back out into their natural anatomical alignment, all of the muscles of the foot will be able to function as they were intended to. That means that the strength and the efficiency of those muscles, of your foot, of your 
running, jumping, walking, whatever the case may be, it's going to improve. The last category is going to be restoring circulation of the foot. This is especially important for people who have experienced plantar heel pain or any sort of plantar fasciopathy. Research has demonstrated that fasciitis is not an accurate term because there's really not inflammation going on down there in the plantar fascia attachment when people are having this sort of pain. It's more of a degenerative pain that is caused by ischemic damage as a result of the medial and lateral plantar arteries being occluded by pressure from the abductor hallucis muscle. So I'm going to put an image up on the screen here and what you're looking at now is that artery running underneath the abductor hallucis muscle. And so to put increased tension on that abductor hallucis muscle, you take the big toe and you bend it inwards towards the midline of the foot. That's that bunion formation that we see. That's going to put increased tension on that muscle and it's going to either in part or in full occlude the blood flow that supplies the plantar fascia. I'll show you another image. It's the same sort of artery, but as shown from a direct side view. And if you can see kind of underneath uh, the bones of the foot, but above the plantar fascia, that's where that artery terminates and that's where the blood supply goes. So that pain kind of right underneath the, uh, kind of underneath the heel, maybe a little bit on the medial aspect, that's the area that is supplied by that artery. And when your foot has this bunion deformity of the big toe, it's occluding that artery and the tissue is literally dying. Therefore, by using the toe spacers, getting the space back in between the toes, bringing the big toe especially into that proper anatomical alignment, you're releasing the tension on that muscle and you can restore or hopefully maintain, if you're not yet at that point, the blood flow to the plantar fascia and avoid things like plantar fasciopathy. So, those are the three main reasons why I recommend toe spacers for everybody, at least everybody who is used to wearing conventional footwear who may have tight, crunchy toes that look more like a triangle than they do a rectangle. I hope this information was helpful, and as always, be on the lookout. I'll have more videos coming soon.